Oh, how cool is that? That's majestic. Wow. So peaceful. When the engines aren't cranking. It's so nice. I'm just sunbathing out here. <laughs> oh, it's very comfy. I like it. Hello. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> I just love their fringes. So much. It was a bit of a misty and airy kind of start to the morning, wasn't it? Yeah, as we got higher up, the well, the fog just kind of set in. You couldn't really see very much in front of you. Look at this lock behind us. It's so glassy right now. This is Lock Tay. And to that, today on Lock Tay, we're going to be <laughs> doing a safari. So we're going out on a boat cruise for about an hour and a half. Yeah. And we're just going to, yeah, cruise around the lock. And you are... We are Dane and Stacy. Right here, and you checked in as well. Why don't we get it in here? This way. There we are. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I don't take my Okay. <laughs> safety first. Safety first. And safety second. Fun third. Why you got safety second? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> take it very seriously. So we're currently standing here at number one. And number one is Pier Road in Kenmore. We're going to head out to this tiny little island in the middle of nowhere in a lock in Scotland. When it comes to history, this island here punches well above its weight. Queens were buried on this island. Monks and nuns lived on it for hundreds of years. Cannonballs were thrown at it on at least two occasions that we know of. It was under siege. And ultimately, the people came to own that. Not only did the host Queen Victoria here on her honeymoon, they owned every single living thing you can see within half a million square miles. So peaceful when the engines aren't cranking. It's so nice. I'm just sunbathing out here. Well, in your puffer jacket and your life jacket. <laughs> so casual. I'm warm enough now, but it was very cold this morning. Um, we're in about 150 meters of water at this particular moment. Oh. Not only that, it's the deepest point in Highland Perthshire, which coincidentally is right next to the highest point in Highland Perthshire. But unfortunately, due to some low flood, you can't quite see Ben Lors up there. And the people that used to live around Ben Lors, they were justifiably proud of living ne next to what they thought was a 4,000 foot mountain. Until the Ordnance Survey came along and measured it for them. And it came out 17 feet short, which is a bit unfortunate. So the, the people around here, they were almost put out. So what they did was they hired a squad of guys, guys with horses, horses with baskets on them. And they put rocks into these baskets and over two days two rocks all the way to the top of the mountain <laughs> to build a cairn 18 feet high. Now, I think the mistake they made was getting the Ordnance Survey back to measure it again and they said, sorry guys, it doesn't count, it's artificial. So they made do with this lowly Monroe as opposed to anything higher. We're currently at the deepest, or sitting on top of the deepest point in the whole of Perthshire right now. So as Stuart was saying, it's 150 metres deep, and I think it's 24 kilometres in length. This is an interesting lock because it's long and skinny yeah. versus the other one that we went to, Loch Leven. It's kind of like a, a, a just a, a typical circle. I yeah. won't say lake because we're not allowed to say lake. No. This has like a little bit of a bend in it too because of the fault lines. Mm. And fun fact, it's also the sixth largest loch in the whole of Scotland. Because of the depth as well, 
there's been there's loads of studies recently about um, there's something about the conditions and the depth and the setup of this lock in particular that, that um, the uh, preservation at the bottom is apparently in absolutely incredible. Mm. So you remember some of the examples he came out with from the scuba divers? Yeah, so down there they've found like textiles, they've found animal bones, they've even found trays with butter on them. And when they've been brought back up, they've been able to find out what animal has produced that butter mm. because it's been so well preserved that's that i've never heard of something that like that before some slight acidity and low oxygen is what is how he explained it to us no idea how that works but it sounds cool you had a good memory <laughs> I really enjoyed that. That was so much fun. That was absolutely worth it. Now we feel like it's coffee time. Right next to where you get on the boat, there's this place called the Paper Boat. Cool logo. <laughs> really cool logo. Right, let's go grab one. I'm so excited for the next stop. Anyone who's been watching our channel for a while will know how much I love animals, or we love animals. So we're going to Highland Safaris and we get to feed some red deer. First food though, right? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I got too excited. We're going for lunch first. <laughs> I mean, animals and coffee is great, but unless I got some food, none of this is happening. <laughs> That would have been fun. Do you drive yourself or do you get driven around? I'm actually not sure. That would be cool. It would have been very cool to do. I wonder what the price is of that. We could look at it. Oh, Otherwise, this is the this is the centre anyway. So they do like the red deer, which is what we're going to be seeing. And then they've got a, uh, a gold mining there. And then there's a cafe. So we're going to go grab some food in the restaurant there, I think. Nothing overly Scottish, but they seem to love their soups here, which I'm really enjoying actually. This is a mushroom and I forget the herb, what's it called? Tarragon. <laughs> tarragon? Tarragon. Tarragon, sure. Mushroom and tarragon soup. <laughs> then I've got some crisps on the side, gotta dig that. And then a toasted sandwich with some thick cheddar cheese in there. I think it's about, my combo was like eight pounds, yours was, just for the toasted sandwich was four ninety-five or something like that. So still really good value. And then we're going to be going into the Red Deer Centre in I think another hour or so. Dave and Stacy. Yes. Right. Let's just see why we're having all these people. Dave. Hi, Dave. <laughs> Dave and Stacy reporting for duty. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's a bit terrible. That means your kid is amazing running away. Oh, wow. This is classy in here. It's rustic, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. These are the ones that grow very quickly. They are a mixture of a whole range of minerals, in particular things like keratin and cartilage. Deers actually grow their antlers. It takes about three to four months to get them kind of this size, although this might be one of the small ones. And then they just fall off and then they regrow them again. I genuinely had no idea in, in the hundred days or so. And they are heavier than you'd expect. It's dense bone. The white circle around the outside edge is the bone, that's the calcium. The honeycomb bit in the middle is what your parents or grandparents, even great grandparents, used to always say made a good pot of soup. Marrow? Which is the marrow. <laughs> Marrow's a protein. The female deer's short of calcium, she's short of protein. It's in the antlers. Mm. Come on! As you can see, they've got a mind of their own. Yeah. <laughs> They're very Come well behaved. On. Come on! Come on! <laughs> They don't, seem, they don't seem very hungry, do they? No, they're not interested at all. Oh, here they come. Whoa. Oh, how cool is that? That's majestic. Wow. Hello. Whoa. A nice balance between the amount of deer that you have and the amount of food. Oh, that was 
That was random, but very fun. That was super random. I feel like they didn't, they, uh, Colin didn't tell us how messy that was going to be before it happened. So he just sort of explained, put a little bit on your hand and then put your hand out. Literally your whole hand just gets devoured no, by no, the no, deer. No. And then there's a owl at the end. We didn't even, I, I kind of had read that it was going to be part of it, but it's just known as like the red deer experience kind of mm. thing that I didn't expect. And then you just hear this. <laughs> And this thing was just flying back and forth. And I was like, Mom! Mom! <laughs> what you saying was like the goats. <laughs> You're like the screaming goats. Hello. Hey. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> so we've just arrived at our accommodation for the night. It's called uh, Old Man's of Blair, but we'll show it probably tomorrow. I just met a horse in the field, and then the owners, Anne and Archie, were like, do you want to go for a ride in the Defender to come and see some hairy cows up the road? And that's that's an instant yes from us. <laughs> First time in a Defender? Oh, it's very comfy. I like it. <laughs> very cool. I'm going to go on the front. Okay. I want the I want the VIP seat. Okay. about the size of these highland cows. They are so big. I, I knew they were big, but these, I don't know if it's gonna come out on camera. These cows are huge. And they're just kind of staring at us like, yo, what you want? Well, I, <laughs> so cool. I love random experiences like this. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just got distracted as we got closer at just the scale. These are the black are actually the original as well. We feel like the the caramel ones as we like to call them are a little bit more marketed but the blacks are actually the original. Can you remember the story? It was a there was somebody of importance at the time and she didn't particularly like the black ones and she wanted something more original and so they essentially bred a completely different color for her own benefit but that's kind of the yarn that we heard anyway but look at this I just it's just such a shame that the scale will just not come out on camera, they are, it's like a small car. I just love their fringes. Like, they're so, like, so emotional. This guy's one's not so long, is it? No, he's less emotional. This is a, a stable Heriko. He's so chill. It must be very used to tourists because it is just on the road here as well. All right, we best be going. Oh, do we have to? We gotta Can go. Can we take him with us? <laughs> Please. 